So it is Tyson Pumachon after Auburn's 50 yards rushing in their first possession of the game. Crowd real loud here with almost 90,000 fans in attendance. Pumachon takes the snap, fakes the handoff, rolls out to his left. Throw to George Johnson. He finds him for the first down. And that's the way that UMass has to utilize that play action game. That was phenomenal right there. The quarterback, Puma John, rolls out to his left. It's just George Johnson coming right across the middle. Makes a nice acrobatic catch. And Josh, we've said this all spring. George Johnson, if you throw it to him, it's going to stick in his hands. Makes a nice catch there for the first down for the Miniman. Three receivers to the right of Puma John. Gino Campiotti is the tight end. This time a handoff to Kron Lynch Adams, who bowls over a defender after an eight-yard pickup just shy of the first down. That's the key for the Miniman, right? Getting the offense going early with Kron Lynch Adams. He had a phenomenal week against New Mexico State, and that's a player that Auburn's definitely going to be looking at intently. Mark Pope out wide to the right. George Johnson and Anthony Simpson to the left. Pumachon dropping back to pass. He's going to run it instead. A scramble drill as he will roll over a Auburn defender to the 46-yard line. And UMass is rolling early on. And you just saw that in, in our monitor right here. Pumachon looks really fired up. He, he's still, right now, he's yelling something to the sideline. And this is a quarterback that's fired up. And he can use his legs. That almost looked like that fourth down play yep. last week against New Mexico State. Good call, Jacob. I was actually just going to mention that, and that is the benefit of having a mobile quarterback as he is in spread formation here with Kron Lynch Adams just behind him. Two receivers to the left, one to the right at the 45-yard line. Hand off to Adams. He pulls it back and just wide of Mark Pope, who was running almost freely on a slant pass. That ball was thrown just in front of him. Yeah, when Pumachan goes back and, and looks at the table later tonight, he's going to wish he had that one back. Still early here. He just held that onto that one a little bit too long, and Pope was clearly open on that slant, spiked it into the turf, or the nice pristine grass, if I will. But UMass is going to have to find a way to rebound here on second and ten. Second and ten, just to the left of the right hash. Pumachan will hand it off. No, he'll keep it himself, and Pumachan has grass. Pumachan barreling down the field to the 22-yard line. Tyson Pumachan keeps it himself for a 23-yard UMass gain. Pumachan gets the job done there. It almost looked like an option play. He had a receiver in the backfield on his left, and like we said all summer long, Pumachan's the guy with his wheels. He may not be too explosive, but when he gets rolling, you better watch out. And that was an option play where he could have handed it off. He also could have pitched it, but decided to keep it himself. Now Pumachan with Lynch Adams behind him. Anthony Simpson and George Johnson to his left in a stack formation. Simpson in motion. Pumachan will hand it off to Adams. Adams to the outside. He has space. First down and more. Pushed out of bounds at the six-yard line. And UMass will have first and goal. That is at the seven. UMass relying on the run game there. Love to see that. Anthony Simpson in motion over the middle and Lynch Adams bursting his way. It's going to be interesting to see what the Minutemen do here as they're inside the red zone. Two tight ends on the field now for the Minutemen. They are Gino Campiotti and Matt Smith. Matt Smith, the transfer from Duke. Real loud here down at the seven yard line. Pumachan with Simpson in motion. Pumachan will draw to his right. Stiff arm. And he goes down at the one-yard line, at the half-yard line, as he is a little bit slow to get up, but seems to be okay. A six-yard pickup for Puma John. That's a phenomenal play, not just the fact that he gets six yards, and now the Minutemen are on just one yard short of the goal line, but the ball security at the end. He had two defensive players come over and try to pop one free. It's the Minutemen line up here. And an Eagles QB sneak formation. We'll see if they try to sneak it. Pumachan taking it himself. He is waiting for the signal. In for the touchdown. Tyson Pumachan puts UMass on the board. 7-6 with the opportunity to tie it. 
and the Minutemen come on down from Amherst, Massachusetts and answer here in the first quarter of the Plains in Auburn, Alabama. It's 7-6 to six as they will send out the option for the extra point. It'll be Cameron Carson. We'll see if they hold on to review it as... Looking at the angle we saw, I don't know how they could possibly overturn it no matter what they called on the field because it was just a mass of bodies. And Tyson Pubachon being 6'4", ran it in. They will not review it. So it'll be Cameron Carson on for the extra point. It'll be a 1-2 to Lipsy. Taylor dancing off second. He lines this one into center field. Stevenson coming in on it. He can't get it. Oh, But Taylor had to... Go back to second. It'll be first and second with one out. Yeah, awkward spot right there for Will Taylor on second. That ball, one of those shorter ones into the outfield, and it looked like for a moment that Stevenson was going to make the play, the diving grab, but it bounces out of his glove. Yeah, tough, tough play right there because so what Will Taylor is doing right there is, is when he gets on second base, he's looking. What does the defensive lineman look like? You know, is this guy pulled, this guy back? And so he makes a read. That ball, look at this falling in. So Will actually started running towards third right there. Had to put on the brakes as he sees him diving right there. Tries to run back. Ball falls. Kind of gets left in between. Yeah. Good call to stay at second overall. Though. Well, what we're saying now with that hit from Lipsy is the bat starting to warm up for Hyannis. And we've seen this in other games. Once they start going, they really start yeah. going. So let's see if Hyannis can scrape a run across here against Aiden Major. Runners on first and second. One out top of the order. It's Nick Mitchell. First pitch to him, Ooh. lined into right center field. Stevenson on the run, he won't get there. It'll roll to the wall. Taylor running around, he'll score. Here comes Lipsy Mitchell heading to third. Lipsy will score. It's a two-run triple for Nick Mitchell. And Hyannis on the board first. They lead two to nothing. Wow. Man, go ahead, Nico. Wow, just talk about on time right there. Puts that ball in the right center gap. Nick Mitchell, the left hitter, catching that ball out front, smoking that ball into the right center gap. Yes. Get a two RBI. Huge hit right there. Luke Combs, when it rains, it pours. And right there, the triple scoring two for Hyannis. Outstanding piece of batting from Nick Mitchell. He's a leadoff batter for a reason, fellas. Yeah, Mitchell with now two triples in a row in two consecutive games. He had one yesterday against Brewster. That one a lined shot, and he really put on the burners. Now it's John John Gazdar, check swing, but he did go for strike number one. Yeah, as John John approached the plate here, we've got the infield in for the Gateman. As it's a 2-0 game here in the top of the third, they have the infield in already. The 0-1 is grounded softly. Nick Mitchell will score. Play is to first. They get the out. And there are two away as Hyannis takes a 3-0 lead. Nice piece of hitting by John John Gazdar. Yeah, it's a good swing right there. Even with the infield in, he pokes it. Second baseman had to run to his glove side and just could not make the play at home. That's an easy RBI there. Good swing there by, by John John right there to get the RBI. So that'll clear the bases now with two outs for Cam Smith. First pitch he takes for ball one high. Smith flew out to right center field, was caught by Stevenson, the center fielder. Hit the ball pretty hard his last time up, though. Here's the 1-0. Lined into center field. That's a base hit as Stevenson fields it on a hop, and Cam Smith seeing the ball real well right now. Now one for two on the day with two line drives. Yeah, Cam Smith makes it look easy. You know, it just seems like time in and time out. You know, that's just the guy you want up at the plate at yeah. any moment. You just seeing the ball well, hitting it hard. Seems to find barely every at bat. Yeah, right now. And you talked about it um, before that hit even, Josh, hitting the ball so hard. Right now, the wind blowing six, mile, six miles per hour north, which is that way. Very good for the offensive side. And there you saw it help out with that hit. There goes Cam Smith on the move. Yadi Hernandez throw to second is in time. Cam Smith gunned down by Yadi Hernandez. So... We go to the bottom of the third, but not before three runs on four hits from the Harbor Hawks. We'll send it to Jacob Irons with a sideline report. Lampson up in the box. The 0-2 taken for a ball. Good speed on third and second for UMass. A single has the potential to score two. 
Lampson, line drive up the middle, it's a base hit. Whittier scores, here comes Pantoja, she scores, standing up. It's a two run go ahead single for Lampson and her hot streak continues now 11 for her last 21 and UMass has the lead once more. Abby Lampson continues to be the most clutch UMass Minute Women over the past couple of weeks. She always gets RBIs in big spots. And there she falls behind in the count, nothing and two. No worry, she's able to stay back on it and muscle it into right center field to score two. Damage not quite done yet as now first and third with two outs for Abby Packard. And Madison Stewart will go out to talk to Liss. Right now, if you're Elizabeth Liss, just want to refocus a little bit. Yes, you were close to getting out of the inning, but if you can keep it at a one-run deficit, you know your bats have the potential to spring back into life. So Abby Packard not taking this time to talk to Coach Panko over at third. Coach Banker told her no, stay at home plate because <laughs> Packard was coming up initially. And Panko doing a little bit of a dance over at third base, messing with Jewel Shields. Packard takes that one for a strike, one and one. There's Jewel Shields. She had the five RBI game against Boston College, which really has started to propel UMass in the right direction. Line drive into the gap in right center. It'll roll to the wall. Shields scores. Lampson trips going around second. She's headed home. Habril's throw home is not in time. Lampson scores with a smile on her face. It is a two-run double for Abby Packard and UMass out to a 6-3 to three lead. That is brilliant hitting by Abby Packard. You get a pitch away, you take for a strike, then you rifle it into the alley the very next pitch. No one even close to it. And how about Abby Lampson? She almost blew a tire rounding second, got a flat for a moment, but she was able to stay on her feet, re-get the momentum going again, and able to score all the way from first on the extra base hit by Packard. I am sure she'll hear it from her teammates there, but <laughs> She was laughing as she approached third. <laughs> What a rope by Abby Packard. And Jacob, you were talking about it. We've seen Lampson just smiling and laughing all the time. She has a lot of fun out there on the field. And it's easy to have that much fun when you are hitting as well as she is. So it'll be an 0-1 to Keggy. That one ripped into right center gap. Another base hit, rolls to the wall again. Keggy rounding second, going to third throw from Habril is not in time and it gets away but not far enough as Sarah Keggy with an RBI triple as she's holding on to her elbow I think she probably cut it sliding into third but she's okay she's laughing it off yeah they just need a band-aid there to take that up Mike Threehouse gonna head out to the mound this inning has really gotten away from Elizabeth Liss UMass scalding the ball, and that's going to end the day for Liss on the mound. Bonnie's to make a pitching change. What an inning for UMass. Wow. I mean, if you looked, we obviously don't have those numbers, but the exit velocity numbers, I'm sure this inning have been ridiculous. But we're going to take a quick break for this, but we'll be right back in just a few moments. <laughs> 